Chapter Four, The Land of Stories. Alex had been acting strange all week. Connor had noticed right away because she wasn't as talkative and upbeat as she usually was. Instead, she was very quiet and looked like she was in a deep state of confusion. When they ate breakfast, she barely acknowledged it when her brother said, Good morning. And during school, she stopped raising her hand so much. After school, she barely said a word to Connor while they walked home. And as soon as they got home, Alex would run upstairs and lock herself in her bedroom for the rest of the day. Are you feeling okay? Connor eventually asked her. You seem different. Yeah, I'm just tired, Alex said. Connor knew she must be tired because she didn't seem to sleep anymore. Every time he had gotten up in the middle of the night to get a glass of water or use the bathroom that week, the lights in his sister's bedroom were still on, and he could hear her rustling about inside, working on something. He didn't have to be a genius to know that his sister was dealing with more than just insomnia. He had seen enough health videos at school to know that girls his sister's age were expected to start going through mood swings and changes, but Alex had become another person entirely. Something very serious was bothering her, and she was keeping it to herself. Can I borrow some of your pencils? A wide-eyed and wide-awake Alex asked him one night. It was like a peacock asking to borrow some feathers. What do you think that means? A peacock asking to borrow some feathers. Peacock already has feathers. Alex already has pencils, so he's curious. He wasn't certain how to handle the request. Surely she wasn't still doing homework at this hour. Don't you have like hundreds? Connor asked her. Yes, but I've lost them all, she said. He, sh he shared the few he had with her. Alex took them and quickly disappeared into her room again. She didn't even seem to mind that they were chewed on or missing erasers. The next night, Connor kept waking up to a pe peculiar humming sound coming from Alex's room. It was quiet, but had a strong vibration, and he could feel it as much as he could hear it. Alex, Connor said, knocking on his sister's door. What's that sound? I'm trying to sleep. It's driving me crazy. It's just a bee. I shoot him out the window, a frantic Alex responded from behind the door. A bee? A puzzled Connor asked. Yes, a very big bee. It's mating season, you know, so they're quite aggressive this time of year, Alex called out. All right, Connor said, and he went to bed. But these happenings were nothing compared to the events during the next day at school. Can anyone tell me the name of the rivers that ran through the ancient Mesopotamia? Mrs. Peters asked the class during a history lesson. As usual, she had no volunteers. Anyone? Mrs. Peters asked. Everyone was looking at Alex and expecting her hand to shoot up in the air any second. But Alex was just staring at the floor. She wasn't paying any attention to anything. The Tigris and Euphrates, Mrs. Peters informed the class. Can anyone tell me what the area between the two rivers is believed to be? She asked the question in Alex's direction, but it was no use. Alex was lost in her own thoughts. Miss Bailey, perhaps you know the answer, Miss Peters pleaded. To what, Alex? Asked Alex, snapping out of her trance. The question, Mrs. Peters said. Oh, Alex said. No, I, I don't. She rested her head on her hand and continued staring at the floor. Mrs. Peters and the rest of the class didn't understand what was happening. Alex always knew the answers. How was the class going to function without her? The cradle of civilization, Mrs. Peters told the class, answering the question. Many people believe, many believe that mankind started there. Miss Bailey. Alex sat up quickly in her seat. The most shocking thing that had ever happened in the classroom had occurred. Alex Bailey had dozed off in the middle of class. I I'm sorry, Mrs. Peters, Alex pleaded. I don't know what came over me. I haven't been sleeping very well lately. Mrs. Peters was staring at her as if she had just witnessed a gruesome rural animal give birth. That's all right, the teacher said. Do you need to see the nurse? No, I'm fine. I'm just a little sleepy, Alex said. I promise that'll never happen again. Connor had been watching the whole thing like it was a train wreck. All he could do was shake his head. What had happened to Alex? Where, were, where was his real sister? She was turning into him. The strange humming sound Connor had heard the night before suddenly filled the classroom. Alex sat straight up in her seat. Anxious, her eyes grew larger than they had ever been before. 
A few of the other students looked around them, trying to figure out where the sound was coming from. Can anyone tell me the technologies Mesopotamia brought into the Bronze Age? Mrs. Peters asked, oblivious to the humming. Anyone? She asked again. Alex's hand shot straight up in the air. Yes, Miss Bailey? Mrs. Peters happily called on her. May I use the restroom? Alex peeped. Mrs. Peters sighed with disappointment. Yes, you may, she replied. Before she had finished granting Alex permission to leave the classroom, Alex had already jumped out of her seat, grabbed her school bag, and headed out the door. Connor watched his sister leave. His eyes were bulging with suspicion. Why had she taken her backpack with her to the bathroom? He had to know what was going on. He was going to confront his sister here and now at school, where she had no place to run and no bedroom to lock herself into. Mrs. Peters? Connor called out. Yes, Mr. Bailey? Mrs. Peters asked. Can I see the nurse? He asked. What for? She asked. He hadn't thought this far into his plan. Um, my elbow hurts, Connor said. Mrs. Peters stared at him blankly. She may have believed him more if he had told her that he was a dinosaur. Your elbow hurts? She asked. Yeah, really bad. I banged it on my desk and now it's just killing me, Connor said, clutching his perfectly fine elbow. Mrs. Peters squinted and rolled her eyes two of her trademark indications of annoyance in one expression. Fine, the teacher said, but I'm going to have to write you a pass. Connor was out the door before she could finish her sentence. Meanwhile, Alex burst into the girl's restroom. She quickly looked underneath all the stalls to make sure she was alone. She zipped open the school bag, pulled out the land of stories, and set it on top of the sink. It was glowing and humming more than ever. Please turn off, please turn off, Alex said to the book. I'm at school. I can't get caught with you here. The sound and shine slowly faded. The land of stories returned to being just a normal book. Alex sighed with relief, but panicked once more when someone else suddenly charged into the be the restroom. It was her brother. Bees don't have mating seasons, Alex, Connor said with a tightened brow and his hands on his hips. He I looked it up. They came from colon they come from colonies just like ants, even the big ones, and they don't have schedules. Connor, what are you doing in here? You can't be in the girl's bathroom, Alex shouted. I'm not leaving until you tell me what's going on, Connor demanded. You've been lying to me all week. I know something's up. I have twin tuition.